here we are with Afia the morning after her uh, pacemaker implant. She's feeling well, she's going home today and she's no longer in complete heart block so her quality of life is much improved and we're grateful to the Arrhythmia Alliance for not just the t-shirts but everything else they do. <laughs> great stuff, well done. So welcome to day three. It was great to see Afia Kanadu up on her feet, age of 93 years old. Remember her pacemaker had completely run out, her heart rate had gone down to 25. Brand new heart rate, rate of 60, feeling really, really well. And uh, with Luke checking the pacemaker, it's all ready to go. We're also delighted to see Yara Adoma, this lovely 74-year-old lady, uh, first-time pacemaker implantation uh, after complete heart block. So today we're going to do this fine gentleman uh, who is a reverend um, who had a Boston pacemaker put in 11 years ago, but it started slowing down. His heart rate's gone down to 50, and that's because it's running out of batteries. Nobody can check it because they don't have a Boston programmer to look into the pacemaker to see if it's failing. But we know that it slows down on purpose as it gets to the end of its life, trying desperately to keep the patient going. Uh, so we're going to take this out and place a brand new... A reconditioned uh, pacemaker uh, from my heart, your heart. Uh, also, uh, in this edition, we're going over to Accra, where they're going to do a patient called Benjamin Togby, who's got a severe aortic valve disease, uh, and we're going to see how the patient from yesterday went on. And there's a few little surprises, so keep tuned as we check out today's activity. So he's got pre and post magnet ECGs. Yeah, it's, it's very likely that it's good. Yes, or nearly good. I mean, if that's after magnet um, yeah. and it's 50, I can tell you that if it's 50, yeah. it's definitely ERI. Okay, fine. Um, so in this case, it's. Because in some it's, some it's 80, some it's 75, so yeah. it's, right. it change, oh, it's, it's, so it's never 50. Never 50 right. normally. So. So, so the case to replace it is made. Yeah. Okay. So, the, so the water was working yesterday. But sometimes it doesn't work. Yeah. Like the oxygen. Yeah. <laughs> sometimes that goes off, yes. <laughs> Rosina, show Joel your big bucket. Show him. <laughs> the, the scrub bucket, fantastic. And if you've been bad, she'll dunk you in it. <laughs> I want this so, to just, happen. Just one, so how often, or how long has it been like this? How long? Yes. Just today. Oh. Okay. Might come in the afternoon. So it might work in the afternoon. Yeah. But this bucket looks like a regular solution. Huh? It looks like it's good. Yes. Yes. It, it's there for emergencies. Okay. Okay. If the time is good. Right. Shall we try and get this soap off then? Okay. This thank you. I think Matt Dewhurst will like this kind of thing, you know, scrubbing up in his own sweat. A couple of raindrops here and there. Am I going to get the whole blue container, or is or is that going to have to go back in the in the in the big bucket? Getting the whole bin. Yeah, I think that's okay actually. Thank you. Okay, everybody. So on the table we have Reverend James. He has a pacemaker, and the pacemaker battery is more or less flat so we're going to do a pacemaker generator change and we're aiming to do it under local anesthetic and when necessary Obi the anesthetist is here to give him some pain relief and some sedation as required. Um, does anyone have any questions? It's, it's exactly like the case yesterday so no changes. Now sir, James there's going to be a sharp scratch while we put the anesthetic in okay? <laughs> And if I can just essentially lift that, yeah. And I can I can feel there are no leads on the top there. So, it's a baby Boston boy. Yeah. So the issue, the issue here is we don't have any interrogators for this device. Um, so we, other than the fact that it's 
almost flat. Um, we, we can't interrogate it and we don't know about essentially his underlying rhythm and we have no uh, temporary pacing capability. It might be sinus for a bit surgery. Yeah, so we're, we're not quite sure when we disconnect this pacemaker whether there will be any underlying rhythm. So I've got everything ready for James to go straight onto pacing with these two cables which we'll put on the electrodes. So, but anyway, okay James? Have you tested the cables already and found that they're good? It, we're, we're just halfway through. All right, James? You're on. So, this is the point at which I ask the cameraman who we have to thank for our ability to replace this uh, worn out pacemaker unit with this fantastically reconditioned unit, which will go on for another 10 to 12 years. Yeah, so we've got yes. this very new Medtronic Azure XT, uh, reconditioned from Pace for Life in the UK with the help of the Arrhythmia Alliance. And across to my heart, your heart, in America, where the University of Michigan have reconditioned it for us and returned it. So, it, yes, it went really well. Um, we had some uncertainties about the device that was in there because we couldn't interrogate it and, and also his underlying rhythm. Uh, but, oh, thanks a lot. Um, it, it wasn't an issue in the end. He had a little bit of underlying rhythm and the box change went smoothly. So we're just closing up now. So, hopefully, James, this will be will set you free for the future. In decades. Right. Everything looks fine. Thank you very much for, okay. for good, yeah. good, good work done. Thank you no very problem. much. That's a pleasure. That's no problem. And we're, we're really pleased because the old pacemaker was not very well set for your heart. That's good. And the new pacemaker, because we can control it better, is uh, pacing your heart in a way which is much better for your heart. So it's, it's, it's very much better now than it was before we started. So after that successful box change, we moved on to our second case where Justin took Lambert and Yor through uh, a pacing insertion of a dual chamber pacemaker on a lady called Janet Ofarua. She's a 70 year old lady. Oh, yeah. with yeah, Lambert, show the camera that device. All right, so here we are. So we had one of our reconditioned Azure XTs uh, and inserted it into the atrial ventricular pacing. So that was her previous rhythm, heart rate of 38. There you go. Yes, and now. There you go. Okay. So you're going to take this back, Luke? Yes, please. Or you keep still now? And that's her fixed. So she'd lived with a very long time with that heart rate of complete heart block, uh, a very slow rhythm, and now that's fixed. So great second case. And uh, that's uh, done for number two. And the next thing we did is we went to took the whole team to see the medical director and the whole uh, management team. They're really receptive and they really want pacing to really upscale and increase in frequency at Kumasi. Use it then. Actually, come on, Justin. Come on, do some mopping. Get to work. Come on, get to work. <laughs> Yeah, you, you, you're, you're, you're your prep nurse as well. <laughs> floor cleaner. Yeah, I think he was best at floor cleaning out of everything he's done. <laughs> yeah. So for the third case of the day, we relegated Justin to be the scrub nurse for your. Uh, he prepped the table, had a little move around of the theatres, uh, and basically Justin. Uh, was prep nurse. So this patient was a 63 year old lady uh, who also had complete heart block called Beatrice Pepra uh, and, uh, and Yor did it. This is her complete heart block 
uh, before the operation and another third successful pacemaker. So good day's work for three cases done by the team in Kumasi. So let's move over to Accra. So we're here, it's day two in Accra. I'm in an empty theatre, this isn't a theatre we're operating in. Um, but today's case is going to be a aortic valve replacement for aortic regurgitation which has caused uh, the gentleman who I've interviewed earlier on heart failure um, and he initially presented about three years ago with increasing work of breathing um, on exercise. His exercise tolerance has decreased, he used to be able to walk uh, as far as he wanted and now he struggles, he can barely get upstairs, he can walk about 50 yards without having to sit down. Um, so they're going to replace his valve with a uh, aortic tissue valve. Uh, it'll be the second operation this centre's ever done. Um, and then the first, the first patient we operated on yesterday is doing really well in ICU. He's recovering well. He was extubated last night uh, and everything's going in the right direction. This is our first case. Very strong man. How are you now? He's better. Yeah. So the pain, yeah, that one will give you medications for you to go. Yeah, so we'll be fine. You are okay. very strong. Mm, when you are talking, strong. when you are talking, don't remove it. Ah, okay. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, so so that your oxygen levels don't go down. Okay. Yeah, so we can talk normal. Okay. All right. So just relax. You are the strongest. Okay. <laughs> it thanks okay. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Yeah. Are you okay? How are you doing? <laughs> So, uh, yeah, well, it's, it's looking nice now. It's looking nice. What do you mean by prime? Explain to me. Prime, prime. Well, we, get, we have to fill the, fill the circuit with fluid before we use it on the patient. Um, yeah. So we we put fluid in the reservoir and then we prime yeah, all the tubing, and that's all the tubing that's going to connect up to the okay. patient. So, so the team are all prepped for the second operation. Jan gets ready in the normal way. He always gets ready for one of Prof Akoa's cases, but luckily, baffled Jan was the surgeon. It all went really smoothly. Aortic valve replacement uh, with Christina as the scrub nurse. Enoch uh, rather short, needing a standing stool. But everything went really well, uh, with most of the operation being performed by the local team. So great job. Patient returned to the ICU in a stable condition. Another excellent operation. Well done, team. Well, and just here, we've just done uh, our pacing cases, done three. And... Uh, very uh, interestingly, we've met uh, Brad and uh, Tom, uh, who are from Utah, plastic surgeons, and, uh, and it turns out that we might have a quite large tumour to remove um, sometime tomorrow. Well, we'll see how that goes. Uh, but you always make friends when you go around the world, so it's great to see these guys, and we might uh, hear more from them tomorrow. <laughs> so, what we're going to remove tomorrow. And I'm just going to... So I'm going to move it a little just to show that it does move. Yeah. And how, how long have you had it for? Two years. Two years. Okay. So this has histology of an aggressive form of fibromatosis. Uh, we've got the CT scans and it looks like quite a big case. Uh, we've got Brad Rockwell from University of Utah, who's a very experienced plastic surgeon, at assisting the professor of plastic surgery here at uh, CAF. Uh, they didn't have any thoracic surgical support, so I'm delighted to help them in any way I can. And I was also very pleased to get a huge amount of support from the UK Thoracic WhatsApp group uh, to try to help this lady uh, remove this tumour uh, as best we can. So I'll be doing that tomorrow uh, while um, Justin and the team get ready for some angiograms and further cardiac surgical operations are performed at in Accra. So tune in tomorrow to see what we get up to. Thanks for watching.